When you purchase a new car, you understand that there is some type of maintenance involved with it, whether that be regularly scheduled oil changes or at some point getting new tires. And a tool like this right here, an air pressure gauge, can actually help you determine if you have a slow leak in a tire that you can easily patch or if you're going to need a whole new tire altogether. Similarly, your small business requires maintenance. And if we were comparing it to a car, the wheels on the car would be your paying customers and clients. Because let's be real, what good is a car without wheels and what good is a business without paying customers and clients? But when it comes to your business, what tool do you use to identify if you have a slow leak in your customers or clients or to ensure that those customers and clients that you are getting into the business are the right ones for your business. Well, keep watching because in this video, I'm going to explain customer lifetime value, also known as CLV, a gauge metric formula that you can use in order to ensure that your business is profitable and that you are attracting the right customers and clients. I'll walk you through what customer lifetime value is, give you a formula that you can use to actually calculate this CLV number, and then also tell you what it can tell you about your small business. Hi y'all, I'm Vivian with The Seasoned Marketer, where we're seasoned marketing enthusiasts, educators, and small business advocates dedicated to helping you grow your small business. If you're a small business owner looking for free marketing resources, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you could get notified every time we release a new marketing video. Okay, first things first, let's finish this car analogy so that we can better understand how customer lifetime value or CLV actually fits into our business model and what it tells us about our business. Remember that your paying customers or clients are going to be the wheels on this bad boy. And so if you had a car and you noticed that you were having tire pressure problems, you would have two options. If you have a slow leak and it's small, you can patch the tire. If you have a fast leak and it's too big to patch, then you have to replace the tire. In your business, identifying a slow leak in your customer or client base means that you notice that that customer or client base needs to be more profitable. And so you could essentially patch it by doing a couple of different things. You could find ways for them to spend more money with your business, either by increasing how much they are spending with your business or how many times they're shopping with your business. You can also identify opportunities to improve your customer service experience so that you can extend how long your customers or clients are with your business. Identifying a big fast leak that you cannot patch would mean that you have to replace that customer or client base. And there could be several different reasons for this. Either the customer or client uh, may not spend enough money with your business. You might spend too much money attracting this person, getting them through the door, and then they never spend enough money for you to make up that deficit or they simply are not the right customer and client and they're dissatisfied with the product and service and so therefore they're only coming in for one purchase and that's it. At the end of the day, your air pressure gauge or your one tool that you should be using to determine whether you have a slow leak, fast leak, or any leak at all in your customer or client base is going to be your customer lifetime value or CLV. What is customer lifetime value or CLV? Customer lifetime value is the total profit that one customer brings in over their lifetime or rather in the duration of your relationship with them. For example, if I own a brick and mortar clothing boutique and I've calculated that my customer lifetime value is $250, that means that every new customer that comes in, I know over their lifetime in shopping with me, they are worth $250 to my business. As that clothing boutique business owner, my ultimate goal, as should yours, is always going to be twofold, to bring new customers in and to increase my customer lifetime value. But here's the truth of the matter. So many small business owners are so focused 
on just trying to bring new customers and clients in through their doors, that they are leaving massive opportunities on the table to increase the CLV numbers. And even worse, it costs more to attract a new customer and client into a business. So therefore, the low hanging fruit, the stuff that you can be doing with much less money, is the stuff to increase your CLV number, which is to bring in those repeat purchases. What can customer lifetime value tell you about your business? Figuring out your customer lifetime value or being able to calculate it is going to tell you a couple different things about the way your small business is operating. It's going to tell you how much a new customer is expected to spend with your business. It's going to tell you how long you can expect this customer to be with you. It's going to give you an indicator of opportunities that you may have to increase your profit margin. It's going to help you determine if you want to increase your marketing efforts or if you want to scale them back. It is going to help you identify any dissatisfaction that your customers or clients may have with your product or service. How do you calculate customer lifetime value? You can actually calculate customer lifetime value a couple different ways. The basic calculation for customer lifetime value is going to look like this. Customer lifetime value is equal to customer value times average customer lifespan. Now let's break down both sides of this equation. Average customer lifespan is actually going to be very simply, the average length of time a customer continues buying from you. If you are calculating this in years, then you're going to want to use years metric. If you're calculating it quarterly, you'll want to use monthly metrics. Now, the customer value portion of it breaks down to average purchase frequency multiplied by average purchase value, taking it one step further. Average purchase frequency is equal to the number of purchases divided by the number of individual customers who made a transaction within that time period. Average purchase value is going to equal total value of all customer purchases divided by the number of purchases within that time frame. My recommendation is that you pause this video so that you can actually sit down and look at the formula. If you're anything like me, you like knowing ahead of time what data you're going to need in order to make this calculation. So the data you're going to need ahead of time is the determined length of time that you want to calculate for, whether that be for a quarter or for a year, the total number of purchases made within that specified time period, the total number of individual or unique customers who bought from you within that time period, the total value or dollar amount of all purchases made within that time period and the average length of time a customer buys from you. So be sure that you're using the same metric that you are using for your length of time. So if you're doing this by year, you're going to want to make sure that your average length of time is done in years. Or if you're doing this on a quarterly basis, you're going to want to be sure that your average length of time that a customer buys from you is done by months. Once again, I recommend that you pause this video so that you can collect all of this data. All right, so now we are going to walk through the actual step-by-step -step formula that you need to do. We have to work backwards. So here is the customer lifetime value formula again. Step one is going to be to calculate the average purchase frequency, which is the number of purchases divided by the number of individual customers who made a transaction within that time period. The next step is going to be to calculate the average purchase value, which is the total value amount of all customer purchases within that time period divided by the number of purchases within that time period. Step three is going to be to calculate the actual customer value. So simply take what you calculated in step one and multiply it by what you calculated in step two, average purchase frequency times average purchase value. 
The last step, step four, is going to be to take your average customer lifespan and multiply it by your customer value. Basically, take what you calculated in step three and multiply it by the average length of time that a customer continues buying from you. Once again, pause this video to review these detailed steps. All right, so let's go ahead and actually walk through a real life example so you can see what this would look like. This example is gonna be based on these factors. The calculation is gonna be done based off of one year or a 12 month period. The total number of purchases is 4,000 and the total customers for that time frame, 2,000. Total sales, 500,000 and the average length of customers that buy from us, two years. Step one, let's calculate the average purchase frequency, which is gonna be 4,000 divided by 2,000, which gives us two. Step two, let's calculate the average purchase value, 500,000 divided by 4,000, which is 125. And step three, let's calculate the customer value, two times 125, which is 250. And step four, calculate the customer lifetime value, $250 times two, which gives us a customer lifetime value of $500. Now, I know we walked through that math pretty quickly, so go ahead and pause the video so that you could see how these numbers line up. If you like this video, remember that every Monday we release a video just like this that could help you save time and money when it comes to marketing your business. Don't forget to check out our website at www.theseasonedmarketer.com where we have a couple freebies for you to download today and where you can also sign up to join our weekly email list where we send you even more marketing news and information. So thanks again for tuning in and we'll catch you guys next week, same time and place.